hello friends welcome to my channel this video is a continuation of what I have done in my previous video where we have seen that how we can create a simple stressful Spring Boot application and how we can connect our application with database if you want to check that video the link is here right now on top right corner of this video so what this video is about in this video I'm going to show you how to identify and resolve error that may arise during database connectivity and we will talk about one specific hibernate configuration to deal with database schema which enables the feature of creating columns in a table or tables in a database automatically and last but not least we will also talk about some other tricks that will provide some flexibility in use of entity bean classes and we'll see more column level configurations that we can do in an entity bean so let's get started in our last video we have seen that how we can fetch all records from our table this is the endpoint to fetch all records from cities table we have seen that how we can add and update any record in a city table using this endpoint and we have also seen that how we can search city from city table this is the repository and this is the bean class for cities table we have this table here in our database having two columns same we have defined in this bean class this is the service class which use this repository class to fetch data and update data okay and these are the properties that we have configured to access the database now let's run our application and uh, hit this endpoint and we will see that what we are getting in response and of course we are hoping to see these records in a JSON format so this is all good right but think about the scenario when we get a requirement from our client that whenever user hits this endpoint he or she should see city code along with ID and city name and as we know that we do not have any field city code here so we need to make some changes of course right so let's do that now I just go to this city bean and here I say column name equal to city code private string city code and so section get our status right kill this terminal save this file the program will compile that for sure okay like our server is started and running on port 8080 but the moment I try to hit this endpoint I will get error because simply the column does not exist so Go back to Visual Studio Code and scroll up and go to the point where we have seen port 8080 right here and check for the keyword error right here and we can see that it is SQL error so it should trigger your mind that this is something to do with the SQL query or the database right and now check what Spring was doing just before this okay we can see that hibernate was trying to execute this query right now in the third line however we can clearly see that the error is city code does not exist okay so in this scenario the error is pretty much clear if it is not clear here what you can do as I suggested in my previous video you can just copy this query go to your SQL server query console and paste it there and you will get the exact error if there is any problem with your query right so this is how we can like debug any issue and if it is still not clear like the query is fine everything is working okay and still you are getting error so you can check this one this code SQL state code you can copy this and paste it on Google you will get like several answers there but 
it should be your last resort okay you need to identify the issue by just looking this console only you need to train yourself like that because in some workplaces you may not get access to the internet in some places okay not every places so you should be familiar with this console right now how to resolve this issue because it is really hard to keep track of every changes that I have made in a bean class because right now it is just about one field but it may possible that the requirement is such that we need to make changes in several bean classes or we need to mess up with several fields so what we can do in that scenario to resolve this issue hibernate provides a configuration that we can write in our application dot properties file so let's see how we can do that in spring properties there is one particular property that we can use to deal with this issue and that property is hibernate dot ddl auto okay it has three options first one is update second one is create and third one is create drop okay we will see all three of them but first let's check this one okay update now what this do it enables the feature in spring that whenever we create any new field or new bean in our application spring will take care of it if the table or field does not exist in our database it will create it automatically okay so now as we have already done that we have created this particular field in our city column and you can see that it does not exist here so after doing this configuration it should create this field automatically in our database right so let's check this one kill this console and run the application again and let's check this console carefully okay here we can see that alter table if exists cities add column city code where two double five okay so hibernate is checking whether the cities table is there in our database or not if it is there then add this column right now check our table see city code is here okay fine we can see that we have data now all rows it is null of course and the moment we hit our endpoint now we get the city code also right so this is how we configure our application to create tables and fields in database automatically okay but here there is an issue which is the data type of this newly created field which is character wearing two double five and I want to limit it to up to three characters and it should not be null okay and since we are not specific with our requirements in this definition spring does not know that and it will create the field automatically by guessing the data type using this data type that we have specified in our bean class right so we need to be more specific about our requirements so let's see how to do that this column annotation has one more property called column definition and it accepts string value right now inside this string value we need to specify the rule that spring can interpret while creating this field and this rule should be a valid pgsql script and how we can find that script it is a script that we usually write while creating the table the part which is after this column name this one okay this is the column definition that spring expects from us okay so let's do that 
it should be character varying three not null default and name okay so now spring will know that okay i need to follow this rule whenever this particular field does not exist in the table so let's check this kill this terminal go to database delete this field save this file now execute it here you can see ultra table if exists cities add column city code character varying 3 not null default and name let's check this here refresh city code let's check the data here and you can see the same thing here right so this is how we can tell spring that what rule it should follow while creating this field right now let's check other options that we have the next one is create okay what it does it simply tells the spring that whenever we compile our application or whenever we'll run our application it always create a new table in our database if the table already exists it will drop it and create it again and of course we are going to lose all our data let's check this one okay kill the application run it again now look at this console you will see that hibernate is executing a query see drop table if exists cities and create table cities now let's check this one here refresh it okay table couldn't find just refresh it again cities here and columns already here but the sequence may be different city id city code city name right and here we can see that now we do not have any data in our table see it is empty now you can check it from here also right so this is how this create option works okay now what is the difference between this create and create drop create drop does exactly the same what create does but additionally it also drops the table the moment you kill your application in other words the lifetime of your table in a database ends the moment you kill your application so let's check this functionality kill your application save it go to run run without debugging now check the console for queries mm, this one here drop table if exists create table cities exactly the same what create does right go here refresh all good right now go to console and press control C and check what hibernate does see drop table if exists cities now go to your database management console refresh there is no table here right so this is how this configuration works now let's move to our next section which is how we can make this bean class more flexible now what I mean by flexible is suppose if I define any new field here private string say bean ID what spring will do it will create this particular field in my cities table right but I don't want to do that I want to use this field for other purposes like I want to set some randomly generated ID during the execution of my application in this field for some reason okay so how I can tell spring that it should ignore this field and should not create this field in my table do that there is one annotation that we can use is transient 
now since we have annotated this field with transient what spring will do it will simply ignore this field and will not create this field in our cities table so let's check this let's first change this to update okay and now kill this terminal execute this application now look here in the console see here create table cities city id city code city name and that's it okay we can check this here also refresh columns only these three fields are here this is completely ignored okay now you can use this field for other purposes now let's check one more thing one more property which is really useful suppose I have a data here let's make few entries first okay so code is del say Delhi and NY say New York okay save it All right now go to our endpoint let's hit this endpoint we are getting the data right now suppose I do not want this field to be included in response so how can we do that to do that just we need to annotate this field with at the rate JSON ignore okay now just save this kill the terminal run the application and here we can see now the ID is gone right this is a really useful feature because there are instances where you really do not want to send critical data with response okay in that scenario you can simply omit those fields by using this annotation so this is it for this video I hope you like this video if you do then please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so that you never miss any notification about new video okay thanks for watching take care bye bye